Hello everyone, it is Sharon McKee and I'm back with my little blog talk thing and I hope to share with you just a few thoughts of inspiration or encouragement, even maybe some uh, leadership um, tips and helps uh, along the way. Today I uh, wanted to share something that I read recently about the proper way to apologize. Now I have tried with my children sometimes very ineffectively to teach them how to apologize correctly. I mean you really can't coerce sincerity out of someone because I have told them many times, you know, apologize to your sister. Sorry. You know, they did say the words but you know, I'm sorry. You just don't look them in the eye and say I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you're so touchy. I'm sorry that you're so easily offended. You know, just these apologies, you're like, seriously, that is not a sincere apology. So I found um, in this book that I was reading by Shirley Petty, um, something that she called five meaningless apologies or the apology, five meaningless games or something like that about apologies. But she says, her, she contends that there are five incorrect ways to apologize and one correct way. And um, so as I began to read, I thought, yeah, I think I've given all of those and I think I've received all of those at one time or another in my life. But I want to, you know, do it the right way and not be guilty of doing it the wrong way. So maybe this could help somebody. Um, or if not, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Any joke? Okay. Um, so the five um, incorrect, meaningless what they, she calls games apologies are, number one is the legal apology. In this apology, you do not plead guilty. You plead not guilty and you shift blame. You say things like, I'm sorry that you were offended over what I said. I'm sorry that you felt that way. You know, you're not taking any ownership. You're shifting the blame. I'm sorry that you can't handle it. You know, you're shifting blame back to them. And the second um, meaningless apology is the journalistic apology. That's where there's an unnamed source and someone told you something and that caused you to act. Someone told me that you had handled that. That's why I reacted so strongly. I mean, what is that? Where is this person? Can you bring her over here? Are you taking 40% of the blame? You know, 30%? Are we taking a poll here? You know, that's the journalistic apology. And the third is the scientific apology. In this one, you hold the entire event under a microscope. You analyze every detail. You agonize over it. Did A lead to B? Let's really get to the bottom of this situation. Was there a scientific cause behind it? You would say, I did X because you did Y. And perhaps if you did Z, then we wouldn't have had to do X. I mean, because as you know, W, Q, and R were also a factor. And that's why I naturally reacted. You know, do you understand what I'm saying? Overanalyzing it. And then there's the theatrical apology. Oh, I can't believe what I've done. Can you ever forgive me? I just, how will I ever make it up to you? Please, things are just so crazy right now. Please forgive me. You know, theatrical. And then there's the political apology. The political apology is one where you talk as if something may have happened, but no one was there to witness it. And it goes something like, um, we regret that a mistake was made. You'll get these from companies. We regret that a mistake was made by someone. Of course, we have no control over the situation, and so we really can't assume full responsibility for the event. Okay, so that is all of the wrong ways to apologize. And um, so the question is posed, if you had to hypothetically give a gracious apology, what would you do? So let's say that um, your two teenage daughters um, are having a fuss because um, one took something out of the other girl's room to wear and now um, she can't find it or it's lost or it's stained or something like that. Okay, so the... Um, Legal apology would be, well, I'm sorry that you're so possessive over your clothes, or I'm sorry that you don't have anything else to wear, or I'm sorry that um, I lost it, but you have so many other clothes, you know, legal apology. And then the unnamed source is, well, I 
I haven't seen it. I'm sorry that you're missing it, but I'm not for sure that I am the one that actually took it. I, I don't know. Did you see me wearing it? Do you have a picture of me wearing it? And so, um, I, I thought, I, you know, your friend was over here the other day and she was looking around your closet. I, it could have been her. And then there's the, um, what was the next one? The scientific apology where you're like, well, you know, your closet is very unorganized and you might have just lost it in there somewhere. Anyway, I could go on and on with the different types of apologies, but the gracious apology is something like this. You admit what you did, you own it, and then you give the injured party time to respond. You say, hey, I borrowed your favorite burgundy cardigan and now I have no idea where it is and I'm very sorry. And then the other person would say, I know, why did you do that? I'm so aggravated, I can't believe that you did that. It just really left me stranded because I was planning to wear that outfit and then I couldn't find it and now I don't have anything to wear to wherever you're going. And then you would you empathize. You say, I know that must be so frustrating. It was really thoughtless and inconsiderate of me to do that. You own it. You empathize with them. And then you offer amends. Hey, is there something in my closet that you want to wear that I could replace it with? Or, you know, next time I get some money, can I buy you a new one? What can I do to make it up to you? And then you have action steps for uh, the future. And you say, hey, listen, I'm sorry I did that. I'm not going to do that again. Next time I want to borrow something, I'm going to make sure that I ask you. And even if you tell me that I can, I'm going to do my best to keep up with it because I know um, that, you know, you like your clothes. <laughs> and so that's a gracious apology when you own the apology. And so, you know, if they don't receive it, then that's on them. Do not apologize over and over for the same thing. Okay, don't do that. Don't revisit the crime scene and submit your evidence and call a judge and jury in. Don't do all that. You know, I'm talking about low-level apologies here. Now, if you have to go to court over something that's different, please don't say, Sister McKee said, don't do that. So, but it doesn't matter if you're um, gracious and all of that if you don't um, follow up with changed behavior because you can't just go on you know committing all these offenses and then behaving as if a simple apology makes everything right again and then you you know you keep acting like a jerk don't do that because that's not sincere um, so you know that's the proper way to apologize don't be theatrical don't be scientific don't be legal or political or journalistic just be gracious just own it look them in the eye and say hey I was a jerk. I shouldn't have called you a cotton-headed ninny, cotton ninny mugging. And they'll say, yeah, that really hurt my feelings. And you say, I know that must have hurt your feelings. I don't like to be called names either. In the future, I'm never going to call you a cotton-headed ninny mugging ever again. Please forgive me. And if they forgive you, then move right along. If they don't, move right along because you've done your part if it's sincere. And it's the same thing when we apologize and ask forgiveness from the Lord. You don't have to be any of those things. You just be gracious and sincere. Own it. Tell them, I know that it hurt you when I did that. I'm not going to do that anymore. Here's what I'm going to do in the future. And then you change. Because what good is an apology without changed behavior? So I just thought you might enjoy that little lesson on the right and wrong way to apologize. I can't find the off button here. But um, so have a great day.